Whether it's a new home or one that needs a change, the retreat that's getting a lot of attention these days is the master suite. No longer just a place to sleep. For many people, it's become the best place to de-stress after a busy day. Bedrooms are getting larger with additional seating for relaxing and wonderful baths are perfect for unwinding. They're also becoming center of style in a home. We've seen a lot of modern master suites these days that have a neutral theme using taupe or white. But here in Atlanta, designer Bill Cook took an unexpected neutral color and really ran with it in his own personal space. And Bill, I want to know why you chose the color gray in here. Well, gray actually has always been one of my favorite colors, Chris, and it's become more in fashion lately. Yeah. And I really like the feeling that it gives us sort of a nighttime feeling all the time, as well as uh, feeling very soothing and relaxing for me. It really is, and you're right, it's a high color in fashion today. Now, in this room, it's a pretty large bedroom, and I love the way it's L-shaped, but you've broken it down or zoned it into three areas. Well, originally the bedroom was rather small, so we took a sunroom and enlarged the bedroom by incorporating that, and it has made three distinct areas, the sleeping area, the sitting area, and sort of a little workspace area, and also a little gallery viewing for the, for the aquarium. You say the aquarium just sort of like that, but that's an incredible thing to have in a bedroom. It's so restful. It really is. It's so soothing and relaxing to watch them when you're in here, too. Yeah, and I like the color with all the gray around it. Now, the architecture. So you've added on, so tell me about some of that in here. Well, I wanted to do really rich dark woods with this thunder gray on the walls uh, to create a really rich dark nighttime feeling. And I think what's interesting too is the cabinetry, uh, like the shelving that houses some of the photographs over in the sitting area, you can be very mobile with your collection instead of being locked into having a certain thing on the walls all the time. Uh, I think the cabinetry, also the design of it, has a very linear, uh, very modernist feeling to it. It's, it's very unfussy. Yeah, and great shapes of the windows too. I love those. Bill, I love the floor, but what is it? It's cork, Portuguese cork, um, done in a very dark stain. And it's very soft, very much like hardwood. Uh, but I just wanted something different. And uh, I really liked the idea of doing terrazzo at first, but it's much softer to the feel. Yeah, I would think this would be much softer. And you've also used three rugs. Now, were they used to delineate the areas? Exactly. I wanted to define the sitting area, the bed area, and also the little work area. The geometric pattern rugs Bill used to define the space add warmth to the unique cork flooring. Bill also selected geometric fabrics for the blanket on the bed and the footstool between the chairs in this seating area. These fabrics add interest to this monochromatic room. Well, I wanted basically just to give the feeling of different tones of color through texture. So I've used mohair velvet on the uh, chairs. I've used uh, flannel, like menswear suit yeah, fabrics, herringbones, bones, some city. leather, and even some hides in the room. So. Wonderful. Furniture pieces are interesting to my eye. They look like there are some oldies but goodies in here. There really are. There's like a who's who of uh, the design industry uh, from the mid-century period. The pair of chairs in Ottoman are by Rob John Skibbings. Uh, the desk is attributed to Gio Ponti, an Italian designer of the period. Uh, the little stools in front of the aquarium as well as the bedside tables are Paul Macab, a California designer. And Bill, any of your own pieces in here? Well, actually, the um, entertainment center on Watt is mine, as well as the bed, Chris. The bed is great. I love it. So it's a combination headboard of, of wood and, and leather? Yes, it's the jerry wood, which matches the cabinetry in the room, and uh, leather, black leather. And wonderful linens. I have to tell you, I love the crispness of the white with the geometric black again. There it is. Bill, I noticed you have an incredible collection of photography in here, too. Well, thank you, Chris. There is a great representation of photographers here, ranging from the turn of the century up to current times. And what I think is very important when you have a collection of photographs is to really use unique moldings on each of them to give that collected feeling, although I've matted them all in white again to bring in that crisp feeling. Well, it's a wonderful bedroom. It is crisp, but it's warm and comfortable at the same time. Thank you so much. Thank you. And if you'd like to create a bedroom that has gray overtones, here are some things to keep in mind. With a strong wall color like this gray, include the color white in your design, as Bill did here with bedding and the photograph framing mats. The white will actually reflect light in the space and add needed contrast to a dark room. In such a neutral palette, use geometric pattern textured fabric on furniture. That's because they'll add pattern to the solid background of the space and ground it with their additional hits of color. 
Think about ways to add seating to your bedroom, like this settee and a pair of chairs that were added here. Having places to relax away from the bed itself will turn your bedroom into a real suite. Now we're not through with bedrooms just yet. Coming up, we'll show you that you don't just have to think pink when it comes to decorating a little girl's bedroom. Coming up next on Interiors by Design.